video, I am going to show the characteristic appearance of endometrial phases in the phase of menstrual cycle. First one is about the secretory endometrium. Secretory endometrium is usually seen in the premenstrual phase. Here one can see the strawberry appearance of the endometrium. It is a little pale pink with small opening of gland openings of endometrium seen all over. We can see that there are white specks like gland openings which is giving it appearance of a strawberry appearance. It is soft pink in color spongy layer which is full of water and can get easily traumatized by just the touch of hysteroscope as we can see in the lower end of the picture where one strand of the endometrium is torn very easily away from the base of the endometrium. So this shows that it's a thick spongy mucosa inside the uterine cavity. The next is the proliferative endometrium. It is usually seen in the postmenstrual or before the uh, pre-ovulatory phase of the menstrual cycle. It is seen in the form of red with multiple vessels. One can see just a bedding inside the endometrium. It is soft, red, irregular surface where we can see the proliferations. The hysteroscope gives us a magnification so we are even able to see the blood vessels underneath in an endometrium which is in proliferative phase. Uh, this has we can see some amount of vessels here and there and on the posterior surface also. It's a little thick hypervascular with irregular surfaces over it which is characteristic of a proliferative endometrium. Here this is a little bit of bulges which are seen in the superficial part of the endometrium. We can see the blood vessels when the, uh, the intrauterine pressure decreases, the blood vessels also start bleeding from there. Here hypervascular endometrium, red and with irregular surface and blood vessels appearing underneath. This is characteristic proliferative endometrium. typically little more red than the secretory or atrophic endometrium. Just by the color and the consistency of the endometrium and surface, one can differentiate between the phases of the menstrual cycle by the appearance of the endometrium. Next is the atrophic endometrium. This is usually seen in the perimenopausal women where the endometrium now becomes pale pink with very little blood vessels. A few hemorrhagic starry appearance can be seen which are the tiny petechial bleedings because of a thin endometrium. They start bleeding with the because of the uh, pressure in the cavity. The small petechiae which are seen is the starry sky appearance typical of atrophic endometrium mostly seen in women who are perimenopausal or postmenopausal but if one finds an atrophic endometrium it doesn't mean that there cannot be any other area of abnormal endometrium which can be patchily present in even in a normal looking endometrium so one must visualize the whole of the cavity in cases of proliferative hyperplasia, the appearance is irregular increased surface with polypoidal appearance and hyperplastic mammillated hypervascular appearance of the endometrium which is friable hypervascular. One can see the uh, increase in the vascularity of the endometrium with irregular surface. You, if you try to gauge the depth, this is generally 
little thicker than the proliferative with experience one tends to identify these if you know the typical one can see small 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 polypoidal uh, surfaces over the endometrium which are showing the signs of hyperplasia as we can see here we can see a little bit of kind of a growth polypoidal mammillated appearance on the surface of the endometrium it is more vascular more red with very highly irregular surfaces little bit area of secretory here seen in between generally it is pathological estrogens in the body with anovulatory cycles here we can see some strand of endometrium in the form of a polyp the unopposed action of estrogen which results in proliferation and polypoidal growth of the endometrium here which is seen in the form of hyperplastic kind of endometrium multiple small small polyps over the superficial layer of the endometrium can be seen here and it is more vascular more friable more red in color with a kind of small small uh, one can't say growth a little bit of mucosal protuberances in into the cavity this is typically a hyperplastic endometrium should not be seen in a normal menstruation cycle generally in those women who are with the uh, PCOS or pre malignant uh, atypically uh, growing endometrium with only estrogen and no progesterone they are the ones which result in hyperplastic endometrium these are also very friable just with a little bit of touch of the thing it can lead coming to the cystic glandular hyperplasia this is the next condition of hyperplastic endometrium where the proliferation has continued uncontrolled and now we can see it has formed a cribri form kind of a pattern in the endometrium or a swiss cheese where cystic areas are seen abnormal vessels are seen it is very diff difficult to differentiate such kind of hyperplasia from uh, the ca endometrium we can also see some kind of abnormal blood vessels but the pattern that it is making can give a little bit of uh, suggestion to us that these are not irregular these are the tertiary branching kind of a pattern so could be just hyperplasia but one cannot rule out malignancy with this kind of appearance of endometrium and one must biopsy it to confirm whether these kind of hypervascular Uh, cribroid pattern with dilated blood vessels and cystic spaces is actually the cystic glandular hyperplasia or it is a pre malignant or a malignant condition only a histopathology can differentiate just by appearance one cannot differentiate between this and endometrial carcinoma or a pre invasive carcinoma or an adenocarcinoma in c2 of the uterine cavity we can see multiple cystic areas with multiple protuberances all over the endometrial cavity are seen this could be pre malignant also a histopathology can only confirm one can see the abnormally dilated blood vessels one can see the cystic areas feeding vessels over to the cystic areas Uh, the histopathology in this case confirmed that it was hyperplasia it was not malignancy coming to the inflammatory condition of the endometrium where it is chronic endometritis this is a very common condition in uh, indian women as there are more chances of inflammatory disorders occurring in the uterus in indian women especially this can also be seen in tuberculosis one can see that there are red more inflamed fiery kind of lesions seen typically in the anterior wall as well as in posterior wall and at fundus there are chronic uh, the synechi formation which has actually resulted because of repeated inflammatory processes and then that has been replaced by the adhesions inside the cavity 
at the fundus. Yeah, the, there is a typical red fiery appearance in patches present in any area over the endometrium which is typically of inflammatory process. Uh, hypervascular, uh, kind of a fiery, you feel that this, this, is, this kind of redness is different from what we had seen in the proliferative endometrium. This is a smooth surface with the actual texture of the endometrium being replaced by red inflammatory endometrium. One patch is seen posteriorly, one is seen anteriorly and at fundus there is a chronic inflammatory adhesion formation with sinicu formation. This is typically seen with the chronic inflammations, may be seen with tuberculosis, chronic PID, chronic uh, in infections like chlamydia, gonorrhea, all these conditions will result in inflammatory uh, appearance of the endometrium. It is a little bit of secretory pattern is seen just adjacent to the inf inflammatory area. So this is superimposed on an endometrium which has gone into secretory phase. Thank you so much.